Welcome back to the Morning Show here on Arise News. Well, it's time now to review headlines. On today's newspapers with the Ombudsman of this day and Arise Media Group and this day Newspaper Limited's Group Executive Director Kayode Komolafe. Good morning, Mr. Komolafe. Good morning, Oji. Good to have you here this morning on Sunday. Good morning, Oji. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Adiso. And good morning, Sheito. Good morning. All right. Okay, thank you. So we'll go straight into the newspaper review. As always, we'll start with this day on Sunday, uh, and we'll take it from top to bottom. Uh, the story on the window uh, says, prepare to receive, distribute 6,100 megawatts of electricity in the next six months, federal government tells distribution companies. Uh, and under that story um, is on the strip, Kiari, Nigeria requires $15 billion to strengthen existing gas infrastructure. And uh, just um, another story beside the, um, the, the, the first cover picture on top, DMO, Nigeria paid $3.5 billion to service external debt, external debt stock of $42.495 billion. $3.5 billion out of $42.495 billion that's according to the dmo and the list story itself slain soldiers military relaxes siege to delta communities indigenous commence gradual return uh, that's the cover story there uh, and the riders three of them say delta advisory council urges military presidency to open access to communities defense headquarters releases pictures of 97 wanted terrorist. And last but not the least of the riders, military rescues 78 hostages in Borno, 16 abducted school children in Sokoto. Uh, yet another story, uh, palliatives, Dangote spends 5 billion naira, sorry, 15 billion for 774 local government areas, distributes 120,000 bags of rice in Kano. That story can be found on page 10 of today's uh, This Day. Those are the stories on today on the cover of today's This Day on Sunday. KK, for your kind analysis. Thank you, Steve. I could see on the, as you could see on the front page of This Day, it's a mixture of uh, the economic, uh, security, and humanitarian uh, stories. Perhaps we should pick up from the, one of the... Uh, photos on the front page of uh, at this day. That is uh, the photo of Alaji uh, Aliko uh, Dangote, Kano State Governor, and the rest in, uh, showing the distribution of uh, uh, rice you know, to people. I think uh, this is quite commendable. But it's also good to stress that you know, others should, uh, while taking a cue from this, that uh, this uh, distribution of you know, palliatives, you know, food to people, it should be done in such a way that the, uh, the human dignity of the beneficiary should be respected. You know, a situation whereby uh, the mode of distribution you know, is such that it could uh, provoke uh, 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 stampede, you know, it is you know, uh, less than human. It doesn't show respect to those people you know, that are, uh, you know. So while we uh, urge uh, you know, government, private individuals, organizations, you know, to do more in terms of uh, uh, distribution of uh, food, you know, at this time that, uh, you know, uh, food scarcity, you know, food inflation is an issue, you know, it should be done in such a way that uh, it is decent and it is uh, humane. The uh, front page, I mean, the lead story of this day is uh, in a quite a relief, you know, given you know, the reactions, you know, to uh, the uh, activities, you know, of the military, you know, following, you know, the killing of uh, 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 soldiers, including, uh, you know, four officers, you know, in uh, Okwama a community in Delta. Uh, so it's good news that you say that the, the military is now relaxing, you know, the, the siege, and it's, you know, it's expected, you know, while the effort to get the perpetrators of the crime, you know, we should ensure that, you know, as much as possible that the collateral damage, you know, is not uh, inflicted, you know, on the innocent 
members of the uh, community. And also, you know, the military also should respond, you know, to the uh, call that the uh, whole activity as, as well as should be done in, in a way that it's, it's accountable and it's also uh, transparent. You know, that will mean that, you know, the press, you know, should be allowed, you know, uh, to have access uh, to what is happening there so that there will be uh, a correct reportage, you know, of what is taking place. The other story, which is uh, economic, if you like, uh, the announcement for by, by the power um, uh, minister, you know, that uh, this school should prepare, you know, to receive uh, more than 6,000 megawatts, you know. It is quite a sad commentary that 11 years after the experiment with the privatization in the power industry, we are still talking of 7 million gap, you know, in metering. That means that you are having consumers, you know, that are uh, having waiting, about 7, 7 million consumers, you know, you know, waiting to have meter, you know, which is, you know, a, a basic item in, in the whole business of uh, power distribution. You know, I think, you know, that's the anomaly, you know, uh, ought to stop, you know, uh, immediately. And I, so that we'll be talking that at the end of this year, you know, the uh, anomaly of uh, people uh, waiting for meters, you know, as consumers, you know, for electricity will be, you know, uh, 18 of, uh, of the past. Then the uh, other, other stories, we are uh, economic, and we also wish to the worry, you know, is the, you know, the huge, you know, uh, amount of money, you know, that is, uh, you know, spent on debt servicing and what the implications, you know, of this will be, you know, in terms of uh, economic management. All right, Mr. Komolafe, thank you for summarizing um, this day for us. And can we move over now to uh, this day style and the cover picture there? But this day style is uh, none other than Bimpe Onokoya at 50. She turned 50 years old uh, last week. Uh, she's a makeup impresario. I was at her birthday ceremony last week. It was beautiful to see, you know, her guests pay her such glowing uh, tributes. Now, when you're talking about the Nigerian makeup uh, um, industry, she is one name that comes to the forefront. And uh, with over, she has over two decades of experience. She has not only carved a niche for herself, but has also become synonymous with excellence and innovation. Shaito, I'm sure you must have worked with Bing Pei oh, a couple yeah. of times, yes. even with I mean, the she's, Fashion Week. She's exactly, been she's for, been with us for forever, decades. and I think she's yeah. such a fantastic, amazing yeah. person. I remember, you know, just the last one, we had a series of interviews that we did for, you know, the entertainment segment across oh, the bulletins yeah, as well, yeah. and she was just very graceful. Yeah. Of course, someone that knows the job 100%, and she's 50 now, yeah. so we celebrate her, yeah. and we just wish her all the best. I can't believe it's only been two decades. I feel like I've known her for a lot longer because she's been such a graceful addition to the Nigerian fashion industry. Congratulations, Bing Pei. Well, let's move out over to the Guardian newspaper now. The Guardian newspaper, the lead story there, why parliamentary option isn't desirable. I think we have a... Um, heads of state here. It's an editorial piece. I don't know if you've read it, uh, Mr. Komolafe. There are about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 um, heads of state, including our current uh, president, yes. uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. It would be nice to see what um, the I opinion the piece is. The key cut to the headline yes. puts it in context. Yes. Profligacy in, in government. In, in, gov yeah. in governance. Yeah. Well, they say for Nigeria, the choice between presidential and parliamentary system remains only a gamble. If politics continues to be essentially transactional and without adherence to integrity, transparency, and accountability, it must be emphasized that the problem with governance in Nigeria is more with the affiliation of politics than the choice between the presidential and parliamentary system. I don't know if you agree with that, Mr. Komolafe, but I'll just take two more stories which I think that are very important. Uh, both the mass head there is the Safe School Initiative, on ending attack on schools, kidnap of pupils, 
10 years on. Another piece in there for The Guardian, and it is refreshing to note that, you know, uh, 287 uh, uh, kidnapped students in Kanduna uh, were released only yesterday. Right now, I believe that they are, you know, they are going to the government house or somewhere in Kaduna. And, you know, I heard that they will be released in batches. And, you know, we would like to see what, you know, all the state governors are doing about the Safe uh, School Initiative. Over to you, Mr. Komolafe. Oh, okay. There's another story there. Defense headquarters declares IPOP factional leader Simon Ekpa and others wanted. I thought that he had been on the wanted list for a while, Simon Ekpa. No, I think this is the first time that the defense headquarters is there. Is there saying it? Yes, yeah, I think he's the number one on the list of 98, 98 if I'm correct. Them, yeah. You know, sometimes. Right. KK. Detroit. Yeah. Thank you, Oji. You know, I think um, congratulations will be in order. You know. Uh, uh, to Kaduna State Government, the uh, security uh, uh, authorities, you know, the security and defense authorities, you know, and and that is just as we have on the front page of this day, you have on the front page of the Guardian and uh, most of the other newspapers uh, in circulation, you know, this morning, and that is the victory, you know, of the security in uh, a number of uh, places. For instance, the release of hostages in Bruno, you know, also the release in Sokoto, and uh, like uh, uh, Oji said, the latest one, which is the uh, the good news, the very good news of the release of uh, students, you know, kidnapped in uh, Kuriga in uh, uh, Kaduna State. Uh, it is important to stress this because uh, while it's legitimate, you know, for uh, uh, people to sustain the pressure on the Nigerian state to perform his basic duty of, uh, I mean, his basic constitutional duty of ensuring security and welfare of the people. I think in, uh, on occasions like this, when, you know, progress is made, it should be acknowledged, to be applauded, so at least to inspire, you know, those uh, men and women out there on the field, you know, working hard and putting their lives on the uh, on, uh, arms way, you know, to ensure that there is uh, a security. And also, uh, to also use the occasion, the happy occasion also to uh, reinforce the demand that uh, all those who are captives, you know, you know, you know especially students in university in captivity, you know, should uh, uh, regain, you know, their freedom because it is the duty that the Nigerian state, you know, uh, hold, hold them. So while we congratulate the governor of Kaduna, while we congratulate the Rono State Governor for the release of all stages and also in Sokoto, we also remember that uh, a month from now, it will be 10 years that we'll be having a grim, a very grim milestone, and that is the kidnap of uh, the Shiba girls. Yes, you know, it should, it should be noted that up to now, over 100 of those girls are yet to return. That means that the Nigerian state is yet to account, you know, for over 100 students that 10 years ago, you know, left home, you know, and up to now, their parents have not got any 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 so it's both uh, an occasion which is uh, quite legitimate for celebration and also you know to reflect you know on the huge challenges that we have you know in the security uh, sector as for the debate uh, over whether we should go back to the parliamentary system or presidential system i think it's a timely one in the sense that you know right now um, efforts you know are being made to you know, review the constitution. But the only reminder that, that is quite uh, apposite at this time is that uh, would you uh, also, also go back that uh, we, before uh, Nigeria changed to the presidential system, you know, in 1979, that there was also a, a great debate, you know, you know, and it was the product of that debate, you know, that uh, resulted into the uh, option of uh, presidential system. And that debate took place between 1977 and 1978, you know, following uh, the draft uh, constitution, you know, prepared by the 49-member committee, headed by the late uh, Chief Ruti Williams, you know. And uh, a constituent assembly was put in place by the, the party military administration then of uh, General uh, Olusha Gumaba Sanjo, you know. And that debate, you know, was quite fierce. It was quite representative. And that is why I think it is a lie, you know, for people to be seeing that the Nigerian constitution uh, is not made by Nigerian people that were just dumped, you know, 
on us because uh, essentially all the constitutions we have had in the last 44, uh, 45 years or so, you know, the, nu the, the, the nuclei, you know, as it were, of those different versions, you know, of Nigerian constitution, you know, you know uh, could, uh, could be found in the 1979 constitution, you know, which was quite debated, you know, be well debated you know, by representatives of Nigeria. So I'm just trying to say that while this debate is going on, we should also uh, try maybe read the minutes of the last debate, you know, and maybe people could uh, have some information, you know, about uh, how to go, I mean, how to move forward, you know, with constitution, constitution making in Nigeria. Thank you so much for that, Mr. KK. Uh, let's take a look at the nation. Uh, the headline story there reads, uh, insecurity, six police officers killed in another Delta ambush, six others missing, force confirms arrest of five suspects, and the IGP orders immediate payment of entitlements to families. Uh, another story there just over the masthead, minimum wage, crisis brews in states, over chapters demand for jumbo pay. Abia, Anambra, Bayelsa, Kebi, Nasarawa, Zamfara, default payment of 30,000. And just uh, at the bottom uh, there, uh, more trouble for Aburi as LP crisis worsens. Lagos chapter demands and battle chairman's resignation. Abia declines hosting party's national convention. And of course, the dollar crash. Pressure amounts on FX hoarders to sell out. And then, of course, uh, just there on the right, DSS summons Adelike's aid over alleged fake news against Oyetola that can be found on page 37. But that headline story there, security, six police officers, when you were still reeling after, you know, following what happened in Delta. Uh, your thoughts on that, Mr. KK? Yes, Shaitan, it's indeed uh, uh, sad news, you know. Our hearts should go to the families, you know, of uh, uh, those, you know, uh, gallant you know, men, you know, in, in uniform. But in all these things, it's, it's important to continue to stress that uh, beyond the, you know, the politics and the policy of it, there is also the humanity, because these these people were, you know, husbands, fathers, you know, sons, uncles, friends, and colleagues. Or some people, you know, who are now. Uh, you know, there are, they are now, they are now orphans, there are now uh, widows, you know, in bereavement, you know. So we should also always remember these people in solidarity that at the heart of all uh, these tragedies, you know, is a, a huge assault, you know, on our collective uh, uh, humanity. Uh, just like in the case of the killing of soldiers in uh, Oklahoma, again, this is also a direct attack, not just on the Nigerian states, you know, but on the Nigerian nation, because these, you know, uh, police uh, men, you know, and officers, you know, you know, have the primary duty, you know, of uh, keeping uh, internal security. So when, you know, criminals, you know, attack them, I think we should take it, you know, as an attack, you know, on, you know, on, on, the, on the society, you know, uh, uh, as a whole. Uh, it's the, it is um, <clears throat> appropriate, you know, that the... IG of police, you know, uh, Mr. I mean, Dr. Kayo uh, Debetok, you know, has responded that the, the uh, compensation, you know, to those uh, fallen officers, you know, will be paid. I think the other thing to uh, stress is that we, uh, the, the police should be well equipped, you know, such that you'll be able to confront, you know, uh, the, the criminals, you know, appropriately, because it is not just acceptable that you know, the criminals you know, are better armed you know, than uh, uh, security uh, uh, agents. You know. So, say again, our condolences to the bereaved you know, families you know, and colleagues of those uh, you know, policemen. Yeah, so let's look at the Sunday Tribune. The largest story there under the masthead revealed how battle for 2027 is tearing Labour Party apart. The rider there is that party stakeholders are divided over Peter Obi's likely 2027 plan. Crisis hits party in Plateau State. Um, we also have a story above the masthead there saying 2024 Hajj 
Nigeria's participation under threat, Sharia Council raises concern, urges the federal government and states to intervene. The rest of that story is on page seven. And we also have Shea McInnade, the governor of Oyo State. The story there is that our achievements made possible by peaceful coexistence of religious adherents. And he's appointing an acting rector for the Poly of Ibadan. And that story is on page four. Under that, unfortunately, we have some bad news. Gunmen waylay driver abduct 10 passengers in Benue State. FPRO narrates how gunmen use dynamites to kill police officers in Imo State. And um, that's insecurity in two separate states there. Um, and we also have Oye Banji inaugurates forest guards to flush criminals out of AKT forests. That story is on page five. And that's coming on the heels of state governors speaking about the need for state police and more security apparatus on the local level. And the last story we have on the front page of the Sunday Tribune is North panics over Senate's decision to probe 30 trillion ways and means anchor borrower funds. Implicated principal actors still in Senate. This is according to sources, and that story is on page two. And it does seem that the Senate has been in crisis over the 30 trillion ways and means um, Buhari's uh, situation, yes. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. I'd like okay. to uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us on um, the newspaper review this morning. Thank you very much indeed.